chemin. Humbly, we are asking him to accept our thanks. Et je vous invite d'applaudir le Seigneur pour sa vie. And I will ask you to put your hands together for the Lord, for the life of uh, the convener of GCK. Et je crois que si Jésus t'a d'avenir, I believe that if Jesus starts to come, comme il a béni le Togo, un jour il reviendra toujours béni le Togo. As he has blessed Togo, he will come again to bless Togo again. Vous savez, les hommes de Dieu, Dieu ne fait que les renouveler chaque jour comme de l'aigle. You know, men of God, God always renew their strength like eagles. Donc, avec votre permission, accueillons l'homme de Dieu de Giseke, so le docteur William permission, Pumouy. Let us welcome the convener of Giseke, Pastor Dr. William Pumouy. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Praise the Lord. Gloire à Dieu. On his final day. What a glorious day to have the salvation of the Lord. And a great day, the final day for the healing of God in your life. I see it coming your way. Today, you'll take all your blessings back home. And even though we're finishing today, the blessings will continue and continue and continue. Where are you there? Father, in the name of Jesus. We well, thank you today and bless your name for everything you have done, the people you have saved, those who have healed, those who have received their miracles, the joy of the Lord everywhere. We're asking, O oh Lord, that tonight, the final night, your power. Power for salvation. Power for sonship in the kingdom. Power for living a righteous life. The power to continue in the grace of God. The power for healing. The power for miracle. The power for turning everything around in every life. Confirm in every life in Jesus' name. Flow of the power of God will continue in every life. And everyone who has attended it so to say, here at the Alpha location, everywhere, all over the world, Abundant life will continue with everyone. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. And today will be a glorious day of receiving more and more and more from you. It's done. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. As we conclude the crusade today, I want to make you understand that there's still blessing waiting for you. Salvation waiting for you. Amen. New life waiting for you. Abundant life waiting for you. Miracle waiting for you. 
healing waiting for you you will not miss your miracle what am i talking about today i'm talking on i'm talking on the abc of all around abundant life and renewal I remember when I was still a student and the teacher will be teaching something. If he looks at my face, I see, can that be? Do I understand that? He'll come to me and say, William, this is as simple as A, B, C. And the miracle you are having today as simple as A, B, C. Receiving salvation today as simple as A, B, C. And the deliverance you have tonight as simple as A, B, C. Anyone who can pronounce A, B, C you are going to get miracle. Can you pronounce A, B, C? Can you pronounce A, B, C? Your miracle is as simple as A, B, C. The A, B, C of all round abundant life and renewal. We're reading from Psalm 103, verse 1. Bless, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. My, my soul, because it received the blessing of God, my soul, bless the Lord. All that is within me, everything in me, inside, because they all receive the blessing of the Lord, the renewal of the Lord, bless the Lord. Look at verse 2. It say, bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all his benefits. Benefits from heaven. Blessing to every part of your life. He says, because heaven loves you, heaven looks at you, and heaven blesses everything in you. He says, bless the Lord. Look at verse 3. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities? Is so loving, merciful, compassionate. He doesn't say that sin is too much. That sin has been continuing for so long. Every sin you have committed, all iniquities, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. He forgives all thine iniquities. And this, and this is the final day of the crusade. Any remnant of sin remaining, it will forgive you. Any kind of guilt still remaining, he'll take the guilt away. And then he says, Who healeth all, all, all thy diseases? Every sickness, every disease, it's a uh, it's going to be removed. And what is disease? Break that word in English into two. 
this is whatever whatever is disturbing and is uh, breaking up and is removing your ease and your peace as a disease the lord will remove it tonight verse 4 now who redeemeth thy life from destruction there is earthly destruction there's eternal destruction every kind of destruction here on earth he redeems your life and a final eternal hellish destruction the lord will take away from you who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies that's what he does and tonight the final night of this crusade blessings untold blessings innumerable have come to you Look at verse 5 there. Who satisfies thy mouth with good things? There's salvation. There is satisfaction. There is sufficiency. And tonight, it satisfies every mouth that prays. Every mouth that calls upon him every mouth that demands and makes petition he satisfies thy mouth the praying mouth the petitioning mouth and the speaking mouth is he gives satisfaction with good things so, so that the youth is renewed like the eagles and the old, the old life is shed away. The sorrowful life is turned to a happy life. Because it renews your youth like the eagles. The Lord will do it for us today. For you. Where are you? For you. You are here for blessing tonight. And all our brethren, all our invitees, everyone online, tonight is going to be a time of great miracle for your soul, for your body, for your spirit, for your life, for your family. Three things we are considering. One, A. Two, B. Three, C. One, abandon all abominable secrets. Two, believe with absolute surrender. C, come for abundant supply. Now you are going to have number one. Abandon all abominable secrets with transparent repentance. God is holy and righteous. He is going to bless us. But he wants us to abandon. He wants us to reject. He wants us to cast away all abominable secrets. And we come with transparent repentance. Repentance. 
Look at that number one. Number one, abandon all abominable secrets with transparent repentance. In Psalm 19, in Psalm 19 verse 12, who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Many times we don't understand our secret abominations. I go to church. I'm baptized as an infant. I take the Holy Communion. I help other people. My heart, like my hands, are playing. We do not, we do not understand our secret abominations. What God looks at, and God says, this is abomination. Abomination in our character. Abomination in our habits. Abomination in our lifestyle. We do not understand our secret abominations. That's why the Bible says here, who can understand his errors? And it says, cleanse thou me from secret faults. And then in verse 13, it says, keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. A person that has the thought of sinning. Presuming on the love of God. God is love. And therefore, he doesn't mind if I speak on the face of his only begotten son, God is love. That's presumptuous sin. God is love. He doesn't mind if I disobey him. Presumptuous sin. God is love. It doesn't matter if I take the Holy Bible. I don't like that page. I don't like that page. God is love. And I tear those pages away from the Bible. That's presumptuous sin. Look at that man. He is a Christian. Is love and he loves everyone. He doesn't mind if I take his wife and defile his wife. The Christian is full of love. Look at that woman, she's a believer and she's full of love. She doesn't mind. If I go to her husband, I mess up the husband and myself, I will commit sin. That's presumptuous sin. <laughs> to assume that because God is love, and then we dishonor him, we disobey him, was sinned against him deliberately. That's, that's presumptuous sin. And that is the secret abomination of many, many people. That's why the psalmist said, praying, keep back thy servants also from presumptuous sin. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall 
be upright. I shall be upright. And I shall be innocent from the great transgression. So we come to the Lord. The Holy Spirit himself, realize, it makes us realize you have secret abomination. And you come with repentance. And the repentance you come with is transparent repentance. You are not, you are not covering up anything. You are not going to church every Sunday saying, oh God, I have done what I should not have done. Since you knew you shouldn't have done that, why didn't you ask for the grace of God so you will not do it? Why do you come every Sunday in the presence of God and you tell God that same thing that doesn't have any transformation, any change? I have done what I shouldn't have done. I have not done what I should have done. If you know you shouldn't have done it, if you know you should have done it, why do you come and tell God every Sunday? That's a secret abomination. It's presumptuous sin. If repentance is transparent, you ask for the grace of God not to continue like that. Job chapter 22, verse 21. It says, Acquaint now thyself with him, and be at peace, thereby good shall come unto thee. Acquaint now thyself with him. Are you acquainted with God? Is holy. If you are acquainted with God, it's a God of justice. If you are acquainted with God, it's a God that hates sin. If you are acquainted with God, God is angry with the sinner every day. God angry? Let me ask you. If you always come to a man's house and you always, every time you come, they feed you, they give you everything you need, before you go, you defile their daughter. God, God bless you. God blesses you. He gives you food. He gives you work. He gives you health. He gives you good sleep. And you take his creatures, the people that should be holy, you make them unholy, you make them unrighteous, shouldn't God be angry at you? If you're going to be acquainted with God, you will love what he loves, you will hate what he hates. Acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. In verse 22, receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth. And lay up his watch in thine heart. Look at verse 23. If thou return to the Almighty, you've been far away. If you return to the Almighty, you have been in the far country like the prodigal son. 
prodigal daughter, a prodigal man, a prodigal woman, you've been far away from the Lord. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. The Lord again is going to build your life. I said the Lord is going to build your life. The lives that are broken down. The lives that are scattered. The lives that are destroyed. The life that has so gone down to become nothing. This night, the Lord will take all the broken pieces. He'll join everything together. He'll build your life again in Jesus' name. But you must return to the Almighty. He says, and thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles. That's sincere repentance. That's transparent repentance. That is a serious repentance. That is true repentance. So that you are not coming back every time I've done what I shouldn't have done. Put that sin. You know the sin. You know where you go every night after you've done everything in the day, then you go to that other place. That is it. And you do that thing. Put that far away from you. That thing you are hiding secretly in your life. My neighbor must not know this. My friends must not know this. The real Christians that I have as friends, they must not know this. That should make it secret. And you know it is not right. Put that far away from your tabernacle. Let there be repentance, transparent repentance. And they, as you abandon all those abominable secrets, mercy will come to you. Mercy for forgiveness will come to you. A new life will come to you. I can't hear your amen. And the Lord will set you free from that abominable secret. What, what if you don't repent? You're speaking at the face of Jesus. What if you don't stop that? You are challenging the authority of God. What if you don't stop that? And you say, and you commit that sin in the presence of God because he sees all people in every place all over the world. And you keep on doing that sin, sinful sin, in the presence of God until you die. And it's like you're speaking in the face of the Almighty God. And you do that every day, every time. And you continue until you die. I will not deceive you. You will get to hell itself, fire, there's torment there, there's suffering there forever and ever. And you don't have anybody to blame. You kept on speaking in the face of God until your final breath on earth. 
you are lost forever. But as But as you come to the Lord and you ask for the forgiveness of God and you receive the forgiveness and the freedom and a new life. You no more speech in the face of God. You are no more defiant against God. You are no more disobedient to God. You are so grateful he forgave you. You are so happy he forgave you. And every time you are rendering grace and you are rendering uh, thanks unto the Lord. When you leave this world, God will take you home to himself. And thank God you will get to heaven. I will get to heaven. Because I don't keep on stealing. I will get to heaven. I don't keep on blaspheming God. I will get to heaven. I don't keep on speaking at the face of God. I will get to heaven. I realized Christ died for me. And because he died for me, I repented. I believed. And I no more do things that blaspheme the name of God. That's the way to heaven. A abandon the all abominable secrets with transparent repentance. B, we'll come to the second point now. Believe with absolute surrender to the trustworthy Redeemer. He is our Redeemer. He died on the cross for us to take all our guilt and condemnation away. He is our Redeemer. He is trustworthy. We can trust him. We cannot trust Satan. He's a liar. We cannot trust the fetish priest. He's a follower of Satan. He is a liar too. We cannot trust the idol worshiper. He too is a liar. They say they'll make us happy. They say they will help us. They say, just come. There's that papa in the village. And he will solve all your problems. And then you go to him. If you look at the sitting room, look at the sitting room. If you look at the roof, the roof is leaking. If you look at the surrounding, all the surroundings, they're not decent. If he's going to help you, he should help himself first. Come to the idol worshiping papa or mama. He will bless, he will bless your children. Look at his own children. What's their level? What are they doing? If his idol can help all children, your own children, let him help his own children first. All those people, they're not trustworthy. Idol worshippers are not trustworthy. You cannot put your life in their hands. But Jesus the Redeemer, he died for us on the cross. 
is the one that saves, is the one that, that delivers, is the one that forgives. And everyone that comes, he has always forgiven them. He has always turned their lives around. The trust, the trustworthy redeemer. Be believe with absolute surrender. Isn't that what we do to the good? doctor in the hospital. You have uh, a challenge he wants to operate you. And then they have the hospital closed there. And he says, you remove your clothes, you put on this one. No, doctor. I don't want to do that. <laughs> Why did you come here? You must surrender totally to that doctor. And then he's going to touch the place where you have, he's going to cut something out there. Doctor, I don't accept that. How is he going to operate you? How is he going to take that degenerate uh, kind of uh, thing there that is disturbing your health? Doctor, you know my position in society. And with my position, actually, I am... Uh, richer than you are, I am more respected than you are, and I cannot think about that, that I will submit my body to you and you touch my body. Doctor, you cannot do that, but help me. Until you surrender completely, he will even give you something that will put you to sleep. You'll not even know what is happening. Without that complete, entire, absolute surrender, the doctor will not help you. Welcome to Christ. It's going to operate our life. It's going to take the evil that is entrenched in our spirit. It's going to operate that and take that away. All the evil things we cannot take away ourselves. He is the Redeemer, is the trustworthy Redeemer, is the one that is going to take every evil thing away, every condemnation away, every sin away, and every guilt away. We must surrender unto him. That patient that will surrender herself, himself, to the doctor, believes in that doctor. Can you allow any doctor to put you to sleep, to cut you, and then to sew you up without believing him? That same trust, that same trust, that same surrender, 
is what you now give to Christ. I surrender all within me, all around me, everything under my control. I surrender to you because I believe you. And you will preach you and take your sin away and give you salvation right there. I believe. Say it for yourself. I believe. believe. To believe means I surrender myself completely unto Christ. Look at Acts chapter 8, verse 35. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Christ. How do you know the doctor that will help you? Somebody spoke to you about that doctor. How do you know Christ that will save you? And Christ that will heal you? Somebody, if Philip will open his mouth and begin at that same scripture and preach unto you Christ. And you hear about Christ. His Savior. God sent him to the world to save all who believe. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. When you hear about that doctor, and you say, okay, I'm still checking up. Your disease is almost killing you. I'm still checking up. And your disease is almost reaching a point of no return. I'm still checking up. You may keep on checking up and delaying until you are gone. You hear about Christ, the Redeemer, the Savior, transparent, <clears throat> trustworthy. He has saved other people, changed the lives of other people. The day you hear about Christ, that's the time to believe. I'm feeling open this mouth. I began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Look at verse 36. In verse 36, and as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What does hinder me to be baptized? Verse 37. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart. If thou believest with all thine heart. Believe. Not with half of your heart. Okay, I raise up my hand. I come to Jesus. And then when I finish uh, here, I will go to the priest in my church and confess to him and get the rest of the salvation from the priest. It doesn't work that way. 
you go to the doctor he does the work and you are not going to go to the fetish man and say the doctor has done half of the job can you complete it for me with all your heart you believe in Christ not Jesus and another thing Jesus and St. Peter Jesus and Mary Jesus and the priest no you have not believed with all your heart when you know that your salvation depends on Christ and Christ alone when you when you know that your salvation depends on the sacrifice of Christ Christ alone He is the Savior. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. That's what the Lord is expecting. Tonight, you believe in Christ as your Savior. And that's how he heals. Tonight, you believe that Christ is your healer. That's how he delivers. Tonight, you believe that Christ is your total, complete, trustworthy deliverer. In, in verse 38 and he commanded the chariot to stand still and they went down both into the water and Philip and the eunuch and it says and he baptized him why did the man ask for a uh, baptism? Adult. Professional. Not a little baby. Because he realized the baptism Jesus commanded is for he who believes. It says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. An infant of eight days does not understand baptism, cannot believe, does not know, does not know who Jesus is, cannot repent. The infant baptism is just a kind of religious ceremony. The baptism that's acceptable in the eyes of, in the sight of God, he that believeth, after that believing is baptized, he shall be saved. The baby cannot say, I believe. He has not even started talking. All that baptism does not work for eternal life. Go preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And so Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, then I'll baptize you. And he said, I believe. You believe with absolute surrender, 
to the trustworthy redeemer and then in verse 39 and when they were come up out of the water the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip The Spirit of the Lord confirmed that the work is done. And, and then he said, the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. The joy of salvation was there. Because A, he abandoned all the secret abomination with transparent repentance. Two, he believed with absolute surrender to the absolute surrendering to the trustworthy Redeemer. See, come to the come for abundant supply and transforming renewal. You have to make up your mind. I come. Because there's not something another person can do for you. This is not something you know, a preacher can do for you. With your own voluntary will. You know that the Savior is there. The Redeemer is there. He is the one that changes lives. And you come unto him. You come unto him. And as you come, you tell him who you are. You tell him what you want. Number one, you want salvation. Number one, eternal life. Number one, forgiveness is after that you ask for healing. Why number one before that number two? Sin is more serious than sickness. We feel the pain of sickness, but we don't feel the pain of sin. Sin is like leprosy. Somebody has leprosy in the fingers. He doesn't feel it. He has leprosy on the parts of the body. He does not feel the pain of leprosy until the fingers are eaten up by leprosy. until all the other parts of the body are affected by leprosy and then it becomes incurable. The problem we don't feel is more dangerous than the pain we feel. If somebody dies of sickness, he can still go to heaven. Lazarus died with sickness. He went to heaven. What if somebody dies with sin in sin? He'll never get to heaven. That's why the salvation is the first thing. You don't want to die in your sin. You, if you die, you want to go to heaven. 
if you only deal with the problem of sickness and you don't deal with the problem of sin, hell forever, forever will be your place of abode. That's why, number one, you come for salvation. And because after your salvation, you're still living on the earth. Now, you need healing for the earth, not for heaven. Heaven is forever and ever. Hell is forever and ever. A hundred years, a thousand years, a million years, heaven will still continue. Hell will still continue. If you have healing, you enjoy the healing for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, even a hundred years, but salvation will go beyond a hundred years a thousand years when you get to heaven is forever and ever that's why the that's why the most important is your salvation and the Lord says come 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 unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest in your soul. I'll give you salvation. I'll give you eternal life. And after you have got that salvation, and you keep that inside your heart, then you come, you say now, for the few days and the few weeks and the few years I want to spend here, I want healing. I've got salvation. I've got restoration. I've got the peace of God. I've got freedom from sin. This one will last me for thousands and, and for millions of years. Now let me get the temporary one that I need for this life for another 30 years. And tonight he calls you. Tonight he calls you. Tonight he calls you. Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Tonight is your night. Let me hear you. Tonight is your night. He will give you salvation tonight. He'll give you forgiveness tonight. He will give you eternal life tonight. Whosoever comes to me, I will in no wise reject. As you come tonight, he will receive you. He will forgive you. He will change your life. Abundant life. Eternal life, everlasting life, abundant supply, real salvation. He'll give to you tonight. Are you there? I'm looking for them. Are you there? Salvation comes to you tonight. And Jesus Christ has paid the whole price. And He says, when you come and you believe, I will save you. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. Your salvation from the hands of Christ is available for you now. You want that salvation that will last you through life? 
that will last you a thousand years and see you go from earth to heaven the most important possession in your life yes lord i want the salvation then you raise up your hand raise up your hand there salvation eternal life everlasting life the very life of God in the believer yes Lord I believe and I come